Okay, so I'm, I'm going to talk about why you want to make a game in a short period of time. And uh, I'm going to make a comparison to about making babies. And how about making a game is like making a baby. And uh, the first part is really good, actually. <laughs> uh, most people enjoy it quite a lot. And uh, you can compare it to making like the idea for the game. And it's really enjoyable. You have a lot of fun and freedom in what you're going to make. And uh, you can let your imagination run wild and stuff and play around a lot. Yeah. And then uh, when you have your idea, you have like these high expectations. Like, this is going to be great. Uh, and you're really looking forward to the final product. Like, whoa, yeah. And then uh, you realize, man, this is a lot harder than I thought it would be. I'm going to have to work a lot. And uh, you run into a lot of unexpected problems like uh, getting fat and, <laughs> and uh, like bugs and annoying things like that. And it really takes a lot of time. Uh, so you get tired of it. And, yeah, you get, like, new ideas. Maybe I don't want to do this anymore. Maybe I would want to do something else. And, uh, yeah, you just want it to be over with. And uh, your friends, they, they stop respecting you because you're always sitting in front of the computer and you're slowly getting fatter. And they don't realize that you're actually putting a lot of hard work into it. So they kind of like see you as this. Yeah, and then there's the <laughs> worst part of making a game. Would it <laughs> Which is uh, finishing it. And it's kind of painful. And you, uh, you have to polish it a lot and like bug test it and promote it. And it's, it's, it's not a lot of fun, as you can see from the image. <laughs> and, uh, when you're finally done with it, you end up with. <laughs> <laughs> something completely different from what you first had in mind. And you're quite disappointed, usually. And sometimes you learn to like live with it, but yeah, other people won't really like it too much. But then sometimes you get lucky and uh, you're all right, yeah. Now I'm going to talk about uh, creativity and how to be creative when making a game. And uh, usually, I personally, I try to experiment a lot, like try new things. And uh, there's not a lot of games out there that try to be like serious. And I think there's a big hole there that needs to be filled. And uh, more people should try to make, like, not children's games, but more like games for adults and mature people. And uh, often when people make games, they kind of settle for one concept and go for it all the time, instead of trying to add some variation to the concept. And that can be really boring in the long run. And uh, I also don't think games don't really need to be fun. Many people seem to think that, but um, you can actually make games that are just like interesting or weird or just creep you out. And uh, that's kind of part of creating the atmosphere. You can use sounds and graphics and everything to create a really unique experience. 
So here I've made a game that tries to be unique. And it, it doesn't have like the expected uh, results of your actions. Like you blow this bird up. And uh, the, the, the explosion becomes <laughs> and um, it's not like you, you'd expect an explosion to act like. And now I added some difficulty. <laughs> and now I have to pick up these points. talk about uh, how to make graphics interesting <clears throat> and this can be really difficult if you're making a game in like four or five hours so yeah there's several versions I've tried to explain <laughs> and uh, yeah they're all really easy to do actually uh, I'm gonna go with uh, doodle first you start by drawing uh, a character, and it, it doesn't have to look very good at all. It can look really shitty like this. And uh, then you animate it, and it looks a little bit better. And uh, then, yeah, he can walk around like, yeah. And uh, then you can, like, change color to save time and they walk around and look pretty okay. Yeah. Then we have the outline where you only draw outlines instead of filling in the sprites and no shading at all. So it saves a lot of time. And uh, when you piece it together, it looks pretty good. And then uh, you can add motion and it looks Pretty all right, yeah. And uh, once you get the basic uh, configurement figured out, you can just uh, add a lot of different graphics really easily to make it look different, but still look pretty good. Uh, here's the pixelated one where you draw like really tiny graphics and uh, usually you can do pretty good animations when you get like really small sprites and uh, then you blow it up so it looks 
bigger. <laughs> and uh, then you can add color to make it look a bit more interesting. And uh, once you got the final product, you can like change the uh, scales of the graphics and have it look like pretty varied. So yeah, that's only one sprite and it looks pretty decent. And uh, here's uh, like basic shapes or geometrical graphics or whatever you want to call it. Uh, and uh, the worst thing you can do is like have two saturated colors. It's not really interesting to look at and it kind of hurts the eyes a bit. So you desaturate it a bit. And then you can uh, make it more interesting by uh, slightly rotating it a bit. It looks a bit more interesting than flat squares. And uh, you can have it less static by like making it twitch a, lip a bit and maybe change color. And uh, you add the atmosphere to make it look like, hey, this is not just random shapes. It's actually more interesting, but it's really not, but yeah. <laughs> and uh, then you can have like <laughs> a rain effect. And it's everything in this uh, example is made by one sprite. So yeah, it's pretty decent. And uh, you can try to make it more interesting by adding a slightly different rain effect, which yeah, looks Kind of, okay. Here's the shitty graphics example, where you just, like, you can't really draw a lot, and you use paint or some other really stupid tool. And uh, the animations are quite important, I think, so, uh, but, yeah, it doesn't really matter exactly how you do them. This looks pretty weird, but kind of <laughs> interesting, I think, at least. And uh, yeah, I'm going to show two examples of this. So yeah, this looks kind of bad, but <laughs> yeah. Once it's animated, it looks pretty decent. <laughs> and the uh, backgrounds, yeah, like these really suck a lot. They look totally boring, uh, but once you scale them, they look pretty decent, right? <laughs> yeah, and you add some parallax scrolling and stuff like that. And then you add the cowboy. <laughs> so yeah. That's actually Morse code, actually. Uh, and uh, here I'm gonna try to explain how to make like uh, really stiff graphics look more interesting. Like when you make a level, I really don't like it when uh, everything is just static. Uh, so you add some elements like you make the blocks flicker and it looks a lot more interesting already. Now I added the, so the color isn't really the same all the time, so it looks a bit even more interesting, even though it's really, really boring. And here's a simple color shifting based on the coordinates of the blocks, which might look good in some games, I'm not sure. And uh, you can also just make the the blocks like wriggle around a bit, and it looks pretty decent, I think, compared to like stiff graphics. I think that was supposed to say gameplay, but oh, yeah. And uh, this is my example. boring gameplay. It 
it's really slow and you have to shoot the enemies a lot to kill them. And uh, yeah, this example is probably more enlightening. Like, who wants to jump an enemy like this many times? Yeah. <laughs> and here's an uh, example of uh, more the graphic really response to like playing. Yeah, I, I died way too early on that one. <laughs> and uh, here's, if you like, want to make a game in a few hours, these are some really important points to think of before you start. Yeah, preparations. You have to go to the bathroom before you start. It's really annoying trying to make a game when you need to shit or you need to pee. It's, it really ruins the mood. Uh, it's hardly not possible. I'm, I'm not sure. I, yeah. And you, you have to eat and drink before. It's really important to not be hungry because you lose creativity when you're hungry and need to drink. But you're not supposed to overeat. It just uh, goes back to the first point where you have to go to the bathroom. And uh, you feel kind of bloated. And, yeah, it's not good. And you have to have an idea before you start. I don't count the uh, conception of the idea as uh, game development time. I'm not sure if I should, but I'm cheating if that's the case. But I don't want to sit like this in front of the computer and have no idea what to do. And uh, you need to use the right tools. Uh, you need to find something that you're comfortable to work in and uh, something that you know will work for like the period you're aiming for. You can't just use anything and hope that you will run it as you start. And uh, you need to use shortcuts. Like, every time you can uh, spare some seconds, just try to go for it. It's worth it in the end. Yeah, th this is really important, actually. Uh, music actually makes a lot more it a game with bad music and bad audio is a lot worse than a game with good audio and good music so yeah this is about music and sound effects and uh, this is the best tool I've ever ever downloaded for sound effects it's uh, called SFXer by Dr. Petter and uh, you can just click one of these, like pick up coins, laser shoot, explosion, power up, hit, jump, or blip. And uh, it will make like a perfect sound the first time you try it. So you don't have to waste any time at all on doing that. And this is like a freeware application, so it's totally awesome. Everyone should have it. And uh, for music, uh, you need to find online musicians that are willing to uh, share their music with you. I usually don't actually contact people about using their music, and I just steal their tunes <laughs> and uh, hope that they won't get angry. <laughs> but uh, if you're like entering a big competition or something, it might be a good idea to send out an email. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they might want some of the money you win. <laughs> All right. Uh
if you guys want, you can ask some questions, or I can show some rapidly developed games that I think are really impressive. Show the game, game games. Okay. This is a, a variation of Snake that I really like because it has really nice graphics and it really works. And it was made in like uh, two or three hours. Yeah, it's basically like Snake, but with cool graphics. Yeah, yeah. I'm not that good at it. Uh, here's a variation of, uh, I don't know if you guys have played it, but uh, there's a game, a really cool game called I Wish I Were the Moon. And, uh, yeah, this is like, uh, you have to find all the, different endings for the game. I really suck at it, apparently. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty fun for a three-hour game. Uh, this is one of my favorite rapidly developed games. It's made by, uh, I think they're called Perfect Run. And it, all right, uh, yeah. You get bigger the further you run, and you have to avoid hitting the enemies, and you can switch sides. It's a really simple idea, but works really well. You have to avoid the uh, rockets that are falling down. that good at it. Uh, I think this one was made in like a day, maybe. And it has like really nice graphics. It's got like a VHS style graphics with the disturbance lines and stuff. Yeah, I suck at it, but uh, yeah. Nah. Yeah, well, it, it's a nice game. Uh, this one has really nice graphics, at least I think so. Them. I hope so at least. 
have. I think that's about all the time I have.